The movie begins in 2010 at a party in the U.S. Embassy in Berlin, Germany, where scientist Gregor Starndorf receives alarming news. Bay Leader 7, the comet he discovered, is on a collision course with Earth. He quickly takes his daughter, Anna, to the command center. His colleague Hinsa, visibly scared and unprofessional, confirms the comet's imminent threat of extinction. Determined to find a solution, Gregor contacts Colonel Waters and designs a satellite weapon named Solstar 2. The weapon successfully cuts the comet in half, but a smaller piece still crashes into western Russia. Meanwhile, Captain Tom Parker, head of U.S. Embassy Security, evacuates his family. However, Anna refuses to leave without her father. As Parker prepares to return to duty, Colonel Waters orders him to abandon his family. Parker protests but is restrained by another soldier, watching helplessly as the aircraft leaves his wife and daughter behind. Three years later, the situation remains dire. The debris from the comet impact has severely affected the atmosphere, forcing Europe's population to evacuate to North Africa. In a snow-covered forest, former U.S. security Captain Parker lives with his dog, Sasquatch. He witnesses an aircraft carrying investigative personnel explode midair. The soldiers inside had noticed a rising temperature before the plane filled with smoke, caught fire, and crashed, killing everyone on board. Back at the command center, evidence suggests that Solstar II caused the attack. U.S. President Miranda Harrison assigns Colonel Waters to lead an expedition to find and destroy whoever controls the satellite. The team includes ex special forces soldier Sarah Henley and Anna, Gregor Starndorf's daughter. Colonel Waters reaches out to Anna, who eagerly agrees to join the mission. Upon her arrival, she briefly encounters Parker, triggering memories of their past connection. Despite knowing that Waters leads the mission, Parker, fueled by the hope of finding his family, requests to join. The president approves, appreciating Parker's approach. Despite his reservations about Waters, Parker must comply with his orders. At the United States airfield in Morocco, tensions simmer between Waters and Parker. However, Waters introduces Parker to his second-in-command, Sarah Henley, who contrasts Waters with her warm demeanor. Their interaction takes an unexpected turn when Sarah ends up in the same shower as Parker. During departure preparations, Parker catches a glimpse of his wife and daughter, reigniting his determination to find them. As the team boards the plane, Waters instructs them to be ready for a risky drop maneuver. When Solstar 2 locks onto their position, chaos ensues as the aircraft begins to disintegrate. With seconds to spare, the team parachutes out with armored personnel carriers, landing in frigid, snow-covered terrain. As they navigate the unstable ground, their journey ahead is fraught with challenges. Parker reveals to Sarah that the comet's impact has disrupted magma flow, exacerbating their perilous situation. Just as he tells her, they witness an ice geyser eruption, demonstrating how deadly it could be if it hits one of the trucks. Watching this, Parker decides to make a detour and is scolded by the colonel. While crossing the riverbank, Parker explains that the road is extremely jagged and unstable, but the colonel insists it can handle the weight of the two trucks. They decide to take a different route and cross through Cologne, using the Cologne Cathedral as a guide. However, as they start driving at a different pace, an ice geyser strikes the colonel and Anna's truck, putting them on the verge of death. Parker quickly moves to save them, rushing outside despite the cold and extreme weather, and sends them ropes for rescue. Anna jumps off successfully, and the colonel follows right after her. Unfortunately, at the ice geyser, they lost several men to marauders. When they finally reach Berlin, they find the city buried under 20 meters of snow and ice. Parker offers to go out on a sled to check things out more closely, and Sarah joins him. Once they take the sled, the team splits into two groups, with the remaining members staying behind. Sarah and Parker drive toward the city but are stopped by a huge hill. Upon exiting, they discover it's a dead end and cannot proceed further. Suddenly, someone shoots at them from a distance, and they rush back to the vehicle for safety. Sarah tries to shoot back, but there are many attackers using the fog as cover. They manage to get back into the sled and drive back to the others. However, upon arrival, they find the others are also under attack. Sarah and Parker slowly come out of the sled and join the fight. As they watch the sled get bombed by the enemy, it's clear that the attackers, a group of unknown survivors, are not peaceful or welcoming. A shootout begins, and a woman at the head of the group retreats backward to find cover. They come across an underground tunnel, and they head inside for safety. Now free from gunfire, 
they start to look around and discover signs of other survivors who have been living in the tunnel despite the extreme weather. A girl who has been there for a long time approaches them and leads them to the rest of the survivors. She is alone, reminding Parker of his daughter, so he takes care of her. They find out there are about 600 people hiding in the subway tunnel, supplied by distributors. The survivors are happy to be found, revealing that it's been years since they had any hope of rescue. Parker shows a photo of his family, hoping someone might recognize them, but no one does, leaving him disappointed. The woman who leads the community informs them that there is a doctor 200 meters away who has been helping to organize things. They discover that this doctor is actually Gregor Starndorf, a scientist who is now blind. Anna is happy to see her father but saddened by his condition. Gregor explains that he couldn't leave the people he helped, as he feels responsible for the chaos caused by the comet. He has been in charge of distributing food and supplies to the survivor communities and believes bringing a gun into such a vulnerable place was unwise. While Colonel Waters and Gregor converse, a man outside strangles the soldier who was keeping watch. He and his men manage to take down anything that comes upon them. They are the same group that opened fire on the team. Meanwhile, the group, not suspecting anything, keeps asking questions to the doctor, who was in charge of the satellite weapon Solstar 2. He explains that he and his chief engineer, Klaus Hinze, designed Solstar 2. It was originally meant to be a new power source to lessen dependency on oil, but due to military funding, it became a weapon. He says he ordered Hinsa to reactivate the satellite to execute a program he devised to extend its area of effect and stop the permanent winter. He is alarmed to learn that Hinsa is using it as a weapon. As soon as he reveals this, the distributors arrive and start shooting at them again. Anna tries to protect her father while the rest of the team fights off the attackers. Despite managing to kill all the distributors, the doctor is killed by a sniper. Before dying, he keeps telling Anna to remember, but he breathes his last breath before he can explain further. Enraged, they head to the commanding facility to confront Hinsa, who is powering up the satellite to destroy Tangier, the new U.S. headquarters city, as revenge for being abandoned. The team is confronted by guards similar to the ones that previously opened fire on them. They sneak carefully to avoid being spotted. The colonel and Parker knock out guards along the way and finally come Fasita face with Hinsa. He refuses to stop his actions. Anna has to remember the password to enter the system room. They have guns and could end his intentions by shooting him, but unless the door opens, they can't get to him. Parker urges Anna to remember the password and after a few attempts she realizes that her father was trying to tell her that the password is remember itself. It works, and they managed to shoot down Hinsa, who was acting mad. The horror had changed Hinsa, and he had to be put down by Sarah. Next, Anna takes control of the system board, while the colonel apologizes to Parker for his earlier actions. Sarah watches the little girl and the dog Sasquatch on a camera and asks Parker to go get her, so he heads out. At this point, the reverse plot is revealed. Sarah unexpectedly kills Waters and orders Anna to retarget Soulstar 2 to destroy Mecca and possibly other targets in the Middle East. She states that she will be paid 10 million by an unnamed group for her services. Meanwhile, Parker returns with the girl and overhears the conversation. He sees Anna captive from the window, but Sarah doesn't notice him. Anna sees him and creates a Distraction by asking Sarah to fetch a manual for the system, pretending she has forgotten how to operate it. When Sarah turns away, Anna uses the opportunity to open the control room door. Parker quickly enters but misses his shot at Sarah. In response, she shoots at the lamp, shattering glass around him, and then holds Anna at gunpoint, threatening to kill her if Parker doesn't put down his gun. She emphasizes her threat by shooting Anna in the leg. Parker gives up his gun and Sarah shoots him twice. In a desperate move, Anna strikes Sarah, giving Parker a chance to tackle her. Despite his wounds, he attacks Sarah. They struggle, with Parker nearly losing, until Anna shoots and kills Sarah once and for all. Afterward, Anna aims the satellite toward Europe and executes her father's program to kickstart the weather. Soulstar 2 uses up its last energy reserves to release a massive, wide-beam microwave torrent that begins warming the atmosphere. Parker and Anna continue to search for his family and his home. 
Inside, he discovers his wife's final message beside their frozen bodies. The film ends with Parker and Anna watching the thick, permanent clouds over Germany dissipate, revealing the warming sun once again.